together growing in faith, changing communities. Together growing in faith, changing communities. My dear brothers and sisters, today I would like us to reflect on the Gospel of John chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 15. At that time, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And the multitude followed him, because they saw the signs which he did on those who were diseased. Jesus went up into the hills, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. And Jesus, lifting up his eyes, he then, seeing the multitude, was coming to him. Jesus said to Philip, how are, you, how are we to buy bread that these people may eat? This he said to test him, and he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii will not buy much or enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a lad here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number, about 5,000. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, so much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the barley, from the five barley loaves left over those who had been eaten. When the people saw the sign which he had done, they said, This indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force and make him a king, Jesus withdrew again to the hills by himself. My brothers and sisters, there are beautiful things in this gospel account that I would like us to unpack. The first thing is Jesus who lifts up his eyes and he sees the multitude that is coming to him. And he asked Philip, how are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? There are two things there. The first one, I love in the Gospel of John how Philip is introduced into the life of Jesus. You remember in the Gospel of John chapter 1 when Jesus is with Philip and Philip goes to Nathaniel and he introduces Nathaniel to Jesus. Nathaniel says to, to, to Philip about Jesus, can anything good come from Nazareth? But Philip seems to have this great attraction and he seems to be very solid and he draws people to God. And that's another beautiful gift about Philip. We see this in the Acts of the Apostles when Philip uh, sees a eunuch and he asks him, do you understand what you are reading? He is a people-orientated person. He wants to live life and he wants to live an impact on those around him. I find it quite interesting that Jesus goes to Philip, not to any other disciple, and he asks them, what can we, where can we buy food for these people? But the second thing that I also find interesting here, it's this image of Jesus, of God, seeing your misery, seeing your life, seeing your situation. God is concerned about your well-being. He wants to know how to solve the problems. He wants to be the part of the solution. So the question when he says, how are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? What can we do in order to help them in their misery? And I strongly believe in this, that God worries about you. 
God wants to see you through it. God wants you to be okay. God wants you to know that you are loved. God wants you to understand that whatever you are going through, he is part of that in your own life. Now, there's something else that I also love. Philip says to the Lord, 200 denarii will not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Now, a denarii, one denaro was given to a day's work. So one denaro for a day's work. Now, when they talk about so many denaries, 200 denaries, that's a lot of money. But Philip still says, this would not even be enough to give them as little as they could probably be given at the time. So Jesus, there's something he does here. He sees a problem. He knows the solution, but he engages his disciples. He trusts his disciples. He engages us. You see, God can come into our lives and he can solve all our problems. He can come into our lives and he can give us everything we want. He can easily do that. He's God. But there are moments when he says, I need you to work with me. I need you to be the part of the solution. I need you to journey through this experience. I know that the end is beautiful. But I need you to value this as you go through it yourself. And so he invites Philip to think and he says, what can we do? And Philip gives an offer. He says, but even 200 denarii is not enough. And then there comes Simon's brother, who is Andrew. And Andrew, who's introduced as the brother of Simon, says, but there's a lad here. There's a young boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. The beauty of Jesus trusting the disciples allowed them to own the process. It allowed them to see what can I do in order to change the situation. And so Andrew comes up with another solution. And this for me is, is quite interesting and quite important because sometimes the Lord will want us to come out with solutions. He will want us to come out with the techniques. He wants us to come out with the answers. And so they come up with a solution. They say to Jesus, well, this is here, but surely this is not enough. And they know it's not enough. But what amazes me is that Jesus saw God does this all the time. He takes the little that I have, he multiplies it. Increase my little faith, my willingness to give, my willingness to forgive, my willingness to be generous, my willingness to heal, my willingness to mend my willingness to reconcile. The little things that I do, sometimes it's the little things that matters the most. St. Therese talks about little things. So to Therese of Calcutta, doing little things for God. And as we do all these little things, they add up. And you see how this young lad with only five barley loaves and two fish is able to feed 5,000 men. There's something you can do for God. There's something we can offer to each other. No one is useless. Everyone can do something amazing for God. Imagine if we all came together. Imagine if we all wanted to work towards a common good. Imagine if we stopped pulling each other from to different directions. Imagine if we stopped fighting with each other. Imagine if we just wanted for a change, wanted to do something great for humanity. It would be a beautiful world we live in. Imagine if we work together as a family. 
We work together as a church. We work together as a society. Imagine the things we could achieve. We waste so much time fighting each other. We waste so much time being divided instead of working towards each other and finding in each other. My dear brothers and sisters, nobody's perfect. No one is without fault. But if we were to trust in God, imagine what God could achieve in our lives. There are certain things I can do on my own, and I can do them quite well. But there's a great number of other things that I cannot do. I am absolutely terrible at them. I just cannot do it. And so too with you. There are certain things that you can do exceptionally well. But there's also a great number of other things that you cannot do. But imagine if you and I came together and I saw this in my own life called collaborative ministry. When you bring other people and you put their heads together, minds together, hearts together, and start thinking and working and doing something great, imagine what we can do as a people of God. May the Virgin Mother of God continue to be with us, to protect, to bless, and to guide us. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.